and say Happy Easter 2016? Yeah. Okay, then say Happy Easter 2016. What about you, Maximo? You want to say Happy Easter? Oh, Happy Easter! Whoa! Whoa! Whoa. Bobble! Bobble! Arabella! These are Nico, Maximo, and their baby sister Arabella. Max and Nico are twins, but have clearly split their dad's Venezuelan and their mom's German roots between them. Arabella looks like she's somewhere in the middle. So this could be a very cute story about genetics, but this is the story of their mom, Angela. Angela is a professor at MIT, a pretty badass chemist, and is running a lab at the Koch Institute for Integrative Cancer Research. We care about trying to innovate in the earliest stages of uh, drug discovery. So we have colleagues around the Boston area who spent a lot of time trying to figure out which genes are important for certain types of diseases. We don't yet know what the best strategies are for developing drugs for these new types of targets that are emerging. So our lab is trying to develop new techniques and technologies to go after these new emerging candidates. And the goal is to find drugs for these new candidates that could be personalized or tailored to a specific individual's type of disease. That's what we do on a daily basis. And there are more things that Angela does on a daily basis. My typical day, get up at 5 or 5.30, get snacks and breakfasts and bottles ready. I might be trying to check emails while the baby's got a bottle in her mouth. Take them to daycare, get into work, and I try and basically just really, really focus on work. Pick up the kids from daycare, the mom and dad are both there, put together dinner, give them a bath, and then probably around 6.30 it's just playtime. And we just basically hang out, read books, play, and that's a lot of fun. And then at 7.30 we're able to relax again. <laughs> They're the best form of entertainment. <laughs> They're awesome. I actually truly enjoy it, but it's exhausting. <laughs> with a very successful academic career, Angela has always had a pretty busy life. But with three kids within 18 months, life has gotten even more crazy. We cannot believe how much time we used to have. Like now, it's <laughs> we never think about vacation. I know this sounds awful, but it's actually the reality for a little while. Everyone keeps telling us that it will get better. We have a lot of friends with three kids um, who are also academics. Yeah, for the time being, it, there's not a lot of free time. It's all work and kid time. So. However, there is not the tiniest bit of regret. When I found out I was pregnant with twins, it was um, about a week after accepting my job at MIT. And I had a panic attack that, oh wow, now I cannot accept this job. And I talked to my department chair and he was like, we'll figure it out. It turned out I think it was the best timing because I wasn't teaching that semester. We were just getting things set up. While I was at home and I had twin babies um, sleeping, I could actually take Skype calls and write grants. It actually wasn't, it was easier than I expected it to be. And you can also interact with your lab remotely as well. I think that I'd always had this fear that, again, you're, you would disrupt your career in a negative way if you had kids, but it's just not been that way. And if anything, it, it makes you focus more, it makes you more efficient. What would you say is the best part about your job? Uh, it's, it's what I was just doing, is having meetings with the trainees. I really get excited, and not everyone does, but I really get excited about writing letters of recommendation and getting on the phone for someone to try and, you know, match them to the next best program. I like teaching, but I also really like trying to help people figure out how are they going to make it to the next step. As I'm visiting Angela's lab and meet her students, I immediately feel this very positive atmosphere. And it's really nice to hear that MIT is a very supporting community overall. I am very pleasantly surprised by how supportive the MIT community is for people who want to have families. I also think that the students are not only understanding but appreciative because it's not always the case, particularly for women, that there are examples of faculty members who've had three kids, especially in such a short amount of time. I've had a number of students, both male and female, say, wow, that's pretty cool and that makes me feel like I can actually have a path in science and not sacrifice family. I see that Angela's success is based on efficient time management and positive energy. But most importantly, she and her husband seem to be a very strong team. 
He, by the way, is also a very successful scientist and professor at Boston University. They met during their PhD at Harvard. I uh, met my husband while he was a graduate student and I was finish finishing up. And we were just friends for a very long time. And then we started to collaborate later after I had left the lab. He really needed to use this technique called surface plasmid resonance. And so... <laughs> We started running these experiments and they were late night and it just kind of left it <laughs> away from just being friends to being more than friends. And we, we collaborate still to this day. We, we publish together awesome. and um, we're like, we're, we're planning on writing grants together. Um, but we have three kids so um, we're at home. <laughs> we're usually pretty focused on the kids. So. Angela and Arturo are a beautiful example of how you can be a passionate scientist and a passionate parent at the same time. And what else could be a better way to raise little future scientists?